Here's the gist of Crossnick Plus, or simply, Crossnick. This is an arcade-esque indie puzzle game developed by Max Krieger. Released in October 2019 for PC and Nintendo Switch, the core concept of the gameplay is seemingly simple, but in my eyes, deceptively deep. Before anything, though, Crossnick's stylish presentation stands out first, saying loudly and proudly, 1999 is called on its Nokia 3210 and wants its aesthetic back. The flat, bright colors, bold fonts, and geometrical patterns give Crossnick a look straight from the Dreamcast era, and I absolutely love it. Obviously, looks only get you so far, but it doesn't count for nothing either, so let's jump back over to the gameplay. At its base level, Crossnick presents you with a grid of tiles, each sporting one of three colors. Using a cursor moved with a d-pad, or a mouse or a touch input depending on your device, you can slide rows and columns sort of like a one-sided Rubik's Cube, with tiles end-to-end -end screen wrapping. The object is to create a full cross of matching colors across the entire grid. Upon creating a cross, all of the matching colors in the row and column will disappear and be replaced with new ones, then you start again. If you're creative enough, you can even create multiple crosses at once, or set yourself up for crosses in quick succession, all of which will net you a higher score, as getting the high score is the main draw of this kind of title. Straightforward enough, anyone could do that given enough time, but in most cases there are pressing obstacles that will pressure you into acting faster. In Time Attack, for instance, you're to make as many crosses and score as many points as possible in a short time, three minutes or so. In Endless Mode, a timer is constantly ticking down and your game ends if it drains, however, completing a cross will refill the meter. All in all, you're trying to make more crosses more quickly and double or triple crosses whenever possible. This can be helped along by creating secondary cursors which lock into place and will slide rows or columns simultaneously with ones being moved by your main cursor, meaning you can move multiple tiles in different places all at once if you're skilled enough. While I'm halfway decent at puzzle games, I often found this mechanic to be a bit overwhelming. But that's totally okay as it's by no means necessary. It's just another feature to increase the skill cap of the aforementioned deceptively simple concept. Speaking of, in most modes, not all tiles will be one in the same. While the positive star tile, which grants you a score bonus, is a welcome sight, there are trickier ones such as locks which are unable to be screen wrapped, and blocks which prevent the line and column they occupy from being moved altogether. On their own, these obstacles can be fairly easily overcome and destroyed by completing lines with or adjacent to them. However, when these obstacles pile up, the difficulty will dial up. Of course, if you're looking to practice or simply relax, the aptly named Chill Out mode has no limits or timers, and lets you make crosses to your heart's content. And you can unlock more puzzle aesthetics by donating bits of coins to the gallery. To explain, as you play the game in most any mode and make crosses and log your high scores to the Information Superhighway, you'll earn a fair wage of coins. These can be spent at the Radical Shopkeeper's Brick and Mortar for more of the game's excellent soundtrack or more costumes and items for Versus mode. Here is where the game really shows shines for me, giving me the same excitement and competitive vibes as titles like Puyo Puyo Tetris. In local versus mode, you and another player choose between a set of adorable characters, each with an alternate costume and custom power-up. Then, you choose from a list of other power-ups you want to appear on your grid. In versus, both participants have separate timers which will refill upon completing a cross. The more crosses a player completes, the more overall time they'll gain and the less time their opponent will have. This means in addition to not running out of time yourself, you're playing a bit of a timer tug-of-war with player 2. Eventually, when power-ups appear on your grid, you can activate them by completing a cross with them, giving you effects such as freezing your timer for a short while, clearing your grid of any locks or blocks, or even limiting your opponent's field of vision, making it ever harder for them to save their screen. Of course, these items can be disabled altogether if you fancy, though matches tend to drag on far longer this way if both players are competent puzzle solvers. Drain the other player's time to score a point and score a preset amount of points to win, and much to my pleasure, the characters all have custom dialogue for each other upon victory or defeat, changing based on their outfit and opponent. Versus is through and through my favorite part of Crossnick, provided you have a friend IRL to compete with. Which brings me to my next point, accessibility. Many options serve to customize both the player's experience and grant said experience to those who may have otherwise not been able to partake. The grid size in most modes can be scaled from 6x6 to a whopping 16x16, adding a fourth color to 
into the mix. The game can be played with a mouse, controller, or touch support, timers can be reduced or turned off, the Y2K aesthetic animated backgrounds can be filtered or outright disabled for the more photosensitive among us, uh, myself included, and the colors that your tile sets use can be customized from a bunch of different options. Just uh, make sure you don't choose colors that are too similar to one another unless you're looking for a real challenge. Overall, Crossnick's clever concept collaborates collectibles, cursors, customization, and competition in a cool, creative way. The aesthetic, characters, and music all synergize in a charming manner that makes both the puzzle game itself and the shell it's contained in thoroughly enjoyable. While I would have loved to see a story mode exploring the versus mode characters more, as well as online play, the budget and time constraints of an indie game are no stranger to me. And for $8, I can hardly complain. If you're a fan of games like Bacross or Puyo Ted, or simply looking for a good time killer title, I would highly recommend booting up Crossnick. Thanks to Max Krieger, the game's developer, for giving me early access to Crossnick to review. This wasn't sponsored in any way, if I didn't like the game I would have said so, but it's so far up my alley I simply had to review it. Oh, and uh, this is unrelated, but I've had a bit of a resurgence and makeover of my streams over on Twitch, so if you want to see more from me, I'd appreciate it if you stopped by. Either way, thanks for watching, and take it easy.